another fantastic drive from Colin Bond. But what about the potential of the Nissan GTR? A most impressive debut indeed. On out to Wanneroo in the penultimate round of the championship. No surprises in qualifying though. Tony Longhurst on pole over Brock. Jones and Richards will share the second row, while Seaton and Bauer round out the top six. Green light on. Brock wins the charge and Jim Richards out like Helder Skelter down the outside. A bad start from Longhurst. Jones got the best of that. They'll all pick into the right-hander. Very, very tight turn, but it'll be Brock in front with Jim Richards right behind him. Alan Moffat thinks couldn't be looking much better for Jim Richards at this stage. Oh, no, great start, Michael, and he really wanted that because Alan Jones and Tony Longhurst, no uh, mean fellows to be dicing with on the opening lap. He's in a beautiful spot. If Brock, he's a marginally faster uh, with his uh, quicker time in practice. He can just lunch in there behind him, pick up a bit of the slipstream, although that doesn't look like he's going to be doing much of that on no. the opening laps. Here's a go by Longhurst. Well, that's pretty close stuff as they swing through there. Longhurst picking up the threads of that as they exit Cold Corner and work their way up the hill. There's Brocky out in front. Longhurst in second. Next is Jim Richards, followed by Alan Jones. A good start also from young Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson. Uh, Sierra and then Dick Johnson and John Bow. Pretty close. And also a good start there from uh, Wynn Percy in the Holden. As we look at the one-minute penalty for car 20, Alan Jones, for allegedly jumping the start, but I'd have to agree with Alan, the length of time the car sat there was crazy. Well, that won't uh, make Alan Jones feel very good at the moment. In fact, uh, if he gets out and passes his team leader here on this lap or the next, you'll know that he's pretty well set to hell with the 60 seconds. It's been the great thing about the Shell Ultra Touring Car Championship this year, Alan, that uh, so many of the cars so closely matched and uh, traditionally we look at the top 10 in each of the races and there's just nothing between them we, we take a look at the replay here of the start looking from the peter jackson sierra of glenn seaton and as alan moffat quite rightly pointed out a good clean healthy start although alan jones they say jumped the start what a pity that's how we saw the start of round number seven and Brock leading from Longhurst, then we see Alan Jones still in third, question mark. Then we've got Jim Richards fourth, Glenn Seaton, Dick Johnson, John Bow, Colin Bond the next man, and Wynn Percy uh, wins in ninth position with Larry Perkins in tenth. Well, Dick Johnson likes to lead races, and he's certainly done enough of that in his career and certainly around the, the Shell Series. But today uh, he had the choice of two Dunlop tyres that he could go for a harder or a medium compound and uh, to secure his uh, chances in the championship he took the harder tires and uh, just not able to match it with uh, the performance of the Benson and Hedges cars at the moment but that's not to detract from his ultimate ability to do well in this race. As he heads down to the right hander at Cobb, how's it going Dick? Oh, not too bad mate, it's uh, having a bit of problem early in the race trying to get tires warm but now we've got a bit warm. It looks that way from up here. Yeah, well, I've also got a, a, twisted, a twisted rear half shaft, which is vibrating like... Well, I won't tell you what. Like no. something. But it's, you know, it's having a good old shake. And uh, I've had it before, but... And I don't think it'll be a problem. Dick with I've just the... got to uh, try and get into in front of Godzilla there. <laughs> Dick, with uh, 20 minutes down in this race, are you comfortable about your tyre choice? the other guys there too. Okay, Sam, I'll let you get back on the job. Thank, Thank you. Bill. There's our race leader. Let's look at the gap back to uh, Tony Longhurst. It is a very long one, as Neil said, just over seven seconds. Now 8.5 seconds. 8.5. Alan Jones, third on the racetrack, but has uh, incurred a one-minute penalty for jumping the start. And then, of course, very close, as you'll see now exiting that corner. Just look at Jimmy Richards and uh, Glenn Seaton. They are getting into... Pretty close combat as they come up to the left-hander. This is probably the next passing move of the race. Seaton has been able to haul in the Nissan. It's still a little skatey. Fourth and fifth. Behind them we have Johnson, Bow, Bond, Percy and Perkins. Yes, well, at this rate of acceleration, uh, there'll be no stopping uh, Peter Brock. I can't see how that kind of a gap can be reduced. Uh, he can nurse whatever problems might pop up on him and uh, certainly his choice of bridge stones has uh, given him a good run here today here's our dulux auto color race cam and zap down on the inside goes glenn seaton so jimmy richards goes back one in the pack glenn seaton doing a good job he's up one 
and starting to close now on Alan Jones. But Johnson, car number 17, being able to get through on the inside of uh, Jim Richards in the Nissan GTR. But a good passing move, we'll replay that for you in a moment or two to show how Johnson was able to uh, affect a pass. In fact, uh, here it was just the previous lap coming down on the inside of the Nissan. Takes him quite cleanly on the inside. Jim has a little debate, wants to fight back as they go down to the next right-hander. But Nick had too much squirt and is able to pull across. Well, there's nothing uh, the Shell team would love more than to get another car in front of Jimmy Richards. Oh, what a huge lose from one of the Shell cars. He's oh, uh, Dick, Dick Johnson. Johnson. And uh, something broke at the front of the car. I just happened to be looking out the front window here. And it was an uh, enormous amount of spark and garbage from the front right-hand corner. Look, he's lost a front right. The car, some major failure at the front of the car. Double yellow flags out there. And uh, Johnson in real trouble. Gee, that is bad luck for that the... That is uh, a terrible luck. Um, and Dick's about to climb out with the... Got to get his seven commentary aerial off. So he's had a suspension failure by the look of it and it's gone straight across the road and that, buried itself in the sand pit. That started a long way back up that straight. There's a replay here. This is the aftermath right at the bottom corner. But I can tell you that for the best part, I reckon, of 300 metres, the car was doing 140, 150 mile an hour with a great sheet of sparks coming off it. Johnson went through one spin, was lucky not to be collected by other traffic and has deposited a major amount of dirt and garbage on the entry to the pit straight. Unbelievable. Well, that's Jimmy Richards making a move now on John Bow down the inside. Moment of truth. John will go in deep. Jim's trying to go in. Almost a little touch there. That was very, very close. You won't see Jim Richards touching anybody, mate. That day he would never do that. I, He's... I was suggesting that maybe John came across the front very late. Well, he may have come a little bit late there, but uh, that, that's fair enough too. He's... Not going to make any mistakes. 14.5 seconds for Peter Brock to Tony Longhurst well, at the that, moment. So. That's annihilation. That's just not They'll swap him. He's running on and bedrock well, specials. They'll, they'll check him for sure. You can be sure of one thing. It'll get a very good look at, at post-race scrutineering. That's done with all cars that finish in the first three. There's the Johnson car off in the sand pit as Johnny Bauer pulls out to put a lap on Chris Lambden in the bow repair skyline. And here comes Gentleman Jim storming down the inside and the Nissan... GTR and this time he takes John Bow on the inside. Yes. That's another championship point. Longhurst is in the pits and he'll also know that Jones has a one minute penalty so we might go down to the pits. I think Dave Christensen's down there. We'll see whether or not we can establish the problem with car 25. Tony Longhurst. Dave? Mike, they've changed all the tyres. They're having trouble getting the temperature right, the operating temperature right by the looks of things. And uh, they're now going underneath the car, so things are not looking good for Tony Longhurst at the moment. Incidentally, Dick Johnson diplomatically doesn't feel like talking just at this very moment. Longhurst has now cut the engine, so I'd say that's the race. Well, Brocky in front, and uh, his spark plugs are certainly firing on all four here for him today. He's got no engine problems. He's got no tyre problems. In fact, I think he would be whistling Dixie right at the moment, saying, how long has it been? Look at the gap there, Alan. There's, we've seen our leader go through. Now we're waiting, of course, for, for uh, the 35, Glenn Seaton. you know, have to tread water for a while. Who runs second, of course, in the uh, Peter Jackson there Sierra. There's Glenn coming through now. Of course, Colin Bond is third in the Caltech Sierra. And look, here he comes. Yes right in there again for another finish. A tremendous performance over the last three races for Colin. Kevin Waldock going through, a consistent runner. And he's got a pretty safe margin at the moment over Jim as Colin exits the pit straight. Jim is just coming into it in the GTR. Well, they've taken the last lap and it looks like uh, the first win coming up for Peter Brock for season 1990. But it's going to be a great and a very resounding win for Peter Brock in car number 05 for the mobile team. They've done so well here today. Dictated the pace in uh, unofficial practice on Friday. Was beaten only by Tony Longhurst for pole. But keep in mind, he was the fastest man in the warm-up this morning. And that's when everyone is geared up to go racing, not to, to be the fastest uh, Sierra on a Saturday. Exactly. Uh, they've, so, they've worked hard. This is what a lot of us feel. Mike, we don't want to see Brocky in a in a Bridgestone uh, mobile combination. OK, they're coming down to the final corner now. Peter Brock has arrived back in victory lane. He comes out of the last corner. The crowd here at Wanneroo Park going absolutely berserk. And Brocky coasts across the line. He's going to do it with style, with grace. 
and plenty up his sleeve here today. Second spot will go to Glenn Seaton, and what a great finish for young Glenn in the Peter Jackson racing uh, Sierra. Let's check them out then, Al, on the um, Shell race score. Peter Brock is your round winner from Wanneroo. Glenn Seaton places second. Third place to the Mr. Reliable, Colin Bond. Fourth goes to Jimmy Richards in the Nissan. And rounding out the five, welcome back to Holden and to Win Percy.